We are two nosy meerkats. We pew, 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 pew. Um, as always, I am Gabby Jordan Brown. And I am Lucas Arnold, and this is episode 20 of the podcast. We made it, everyone. Wow. Yeah. All we had to do was sit here and talk to each other for two hours every mm-hmm. week. And yeah. it has been excruciatingly difficult. I uh, know. <laughs> I've lost toes to this podcast. <laughs> I, I, I'm really into toes. So every time we record, yeah. Lucas has to give me a toe. It's weird that you've yeah. run out by now. Well, I think see the thing is I have very long toes. So they so they so they supplant the the weight bearing of the of the other ones. Oh, got it. Okay, but do you have 20 toes? Because I've somehow I'm still taking toes from you, even though you're supposed to only have 10. They sell them in bulk at Costco. It's all good. Okay, great. Perfect. Yeah. Did you ever see did you ever watch Phil the Future as a kid? No, I never watched that. There's an episode where um this guy, obviously, he's from the future. And he goes on Is like, he called Phil? Um, shockingly, yes. <laughs> His name, much to everyone's surprise, is Phil. Um, and he's of the future. And he goes mm-hmm. on a class field trip where uh, they have to swim. But he doesn't mm-hmm. have a pinky toe because in the future, they've deemed pinky toes obsolete. So oh. he has well, to put on like a fake pinky toe and then it gets lost in oh. the pool. <laughs> like swirling around <laughs> that's hilarious well the thing is isn't it a thing that like the pinky toe is something that's sort of just like shrinking due to evolution just not needing it anymore kind of like what the appendix was in the past but isn't now isn't that kind of a thing wait the appendix was yeah i think that the reason why the appendix is so small it does serve some function but i think that the appendix like used to be a larger organ in like our ancestors bodies like before homo sapiens that like that that was larger but it's not used as much and so it just sort of shrinks over time and i'm wondering if that's the same thing with pinky toes because like other primates they have like very graspy toes or and so they can they do a lot more stuff but our pinky toes don't really do that much so is it just shrinking and maybe disappear Mm. over time kind of like the tail oh yeah well i wish humans had tails but what i don't understand is how the appendix lost relevance and then gained it again like what it's kind like of an old comeback? celebrity trying to get into <laughs> we canceled the appendix it put out an apology it put out a newsletter <laughs> it put out a fitness video and a fight to be relevant <laughs> it's selling sugar bear hair vitamins <laughs> it's selling what its vagina would smell like <laughs> as oh a candle God. the goop candle oh my mm-hmm. god how much is the goop candle again it was like some kind of Let's find, I want, I want to find out. I want to know how much is that dastardly little candle? Goop heretic. This smells like my vagina candle. It's $75. Okay. This is okay. Genuinely. How much do you think the smell of your genitalia is worth? Zero (laughs) dollars. If I could pay to get away from it, I would. You know, it's worth thousands of dollars to not have that smell anymore. Yeah. How much do you think, Lucas? Well, the thing is, there are pervs out there. There's lots of pervs out there. And I genuinely, I think that they, that there are pervs that might pay 20 bucks. Well, here's the thing. You are a bit of a public figure. Mm. So I wonder if it's the kind of thing where like. It's like me, Obama. It's like right there. Yeah. Right, that like, if you went on Cameo, for example, I bet you could I am charge. On Cameo. Wait, are you serious? You're like, ah! yeah, I'm on Cameo. <laughs> I did one yesterday. Holy fuck! For who? Wait, I'm gonna request the Cameo for me. <laughs> How much do you charge? Um, I think it's like twelve bucks right now, but I might change it in the future. Yeah. But yeah, I um, but yeah, I think it was just a a happy second anniversary video yesterday. Yeah. Second anniversary specifically, yeah. that's cute. Oh, I've had weird requests. I once was asked, um, this dude who uh, made a request on Cameo, and he said, hey, can you do a promo video for my girlfriend's OnlyFans? Oh, so like a, like a foreword for a book? <laughs> like where you're introducing <laughs> the subject matter? 
<laughs> like an endorsement on the back of the cover. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I, I don't even remember what the script, or like what the, what the idea was, but I just, I know he was, he wanted to use it as like to post on social media, be like, Hey, check out this only fans watch watch the naked body just I don't know like well that's but, pretty um, funny actually I like that I feel like oh, yeah. if I had only fans I would try and make it like creatively or cut above like that yeah but the thing is like I respond I I declined but I responded and said I don't feel comfortable however I respect your hustle and I wish you the best I wanted oh. to let him I wanted to let him know that I appreciated what he's doing I was like he's taking an initiative trying to put the word out to help his girlfriend get some get some income i thought this is a good dude i thought well yeah. i like that that's true for my girlfriend's only fans that's really sweet yeah. um yeah, I, he was i've thought dude. about if like if i ever created an only fans obviously it'd be like a couple's only fans and we would just like <laughs> review like movies like while naked or something like just something mm, artistically yeah. kind of a cut above so i see where that guy's yeah, yeah, coming yeah. i see where that guy's coming from yeah. Well, what's interesting is that because of TikTok, I've now met multiple people who do OnlyFans. And it's very interesting. And a couple of them are like, oh, yeah, you should do it. I'm like, no, 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 no. And they're like, no, 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 you can do comedy videos. You can do just put stuff behind a paywall. I'm like, I want to save this realm for you. This is for you. I I have many other I have many other means available to me. Let OnlyFans be for the for the for the amateur porn. <laughs> Let's <laughs> maybe instead of a patreon we should just get a two nosy meerkats only fans okay <laughs> this is this is not a bad idea <laughs> meerkats after dark Ooh. meerkats in the crack den <laughs> <laughs> and i'm meerkats not trying to say that sex work is the same thing as being in a crack den because obviously i don't I'm think that is that this podcast is sex work that's what i'm saying we've always known this we've yes. always known this is this is us shilling ourselves out for the masses mm -hmm. exactly yeah this is like i'm showing my titties to the world exactly i am <laughs> showing my proverbial uh titties proverbial tit <laughs> but wait you didn't answer the original question which is like okay, how much would you sell the candle of your junk smell for i said 20 bucks okay yeah fair yeah. enough I, well i think i was trying to think like what because people could bid up to anything but i'm thinking that's that's a for like the the really dedicated perv and fan out there i would probably say something i would probably start there and then mm. if it like really took off i might increase but i would start i would start there mm. that's also not, i don't actually know what a regular scented candle costs i've never bought a scented candle oh it varies i mean tj max you can get them pretty cheap like uh but you know target it's a little more expensive and then mm -hmm. for the really expensive shit it's probably around what that gwyneth paltrow candle costs like maybe a little yeah. lower like you could get a 50 dollars scented candle pretty easily i don't know why you'd want to uh, but you could when, but for the most part, I'd say on my scented candles, I spend like 10, 15 bucks. Okay. But the thing is like, a scented candle is meant to like make your home smell really nice. So, okay. Let's say that Gwyneth Paltrow has like the best smelling puss out there. Would you, why would you want it to smell like anyone's though? I wouldn't want, as much as I am a fan of vaginas in general. I thought you were gonna say of Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> Listen, loved her turn in Shakespeare in Love, but yes, <laughs> not into. Well, I think she did it for a number of reasons. The first was to make money, um, mm -hmm. and the second was under the guise of like female empowerment. I feel like that's why Gwyneth Paltrow kind of does everything. Um, mm. And also she sells those, I mean, there's like a whole, there's a whole other podcast just on Goop alone, uh, yeah. which is kind of her empire of shit. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering, is there anyone, I, I want you to, I want you to spill the beans. Who else do you think, uh, uh, who else do you think their work is under the guise of female empowerment? What I if I, what, what if I said like the most random celebrity, like Paddington Bear? <laughs> <laughs> Paddington Bear is fake woke. <laughs> Total second wave. Um, Marmalade is part of the patriarchy. <laughs> yeah. 
marvelly and i mean it's like putting a band-aid on a bullet hole like that's not gonna <laughs> solve late stage capitalism paddington what the fuck are you doing let's cancel paddington fuck paddington fuck paddington <laughs> fuck paddington <laughs> and your marmalade ass pink tax item oh is pink tax um <laughs> who is under the guise of feminism i mean mm. ivanka ivanka oh yeah that's a good answer that's a very good answer um i mean any of these women who are so insipid i don't know yeah. maybe Ghislaine abigail Maxwell. shapiro oh yes yeah. abigail or marjorie taylor Green. i mean not even actually i don't know what marjorie she's, taylor green is about i've lost she's track. on some extra shit she's on <laughs> she said what the jews make lasers yeah she said that, i think it was like california wildfire i could confirm hold on um but i'm pretty sure that what she said was like um that um the Jews that, are awesome, uh, and she the Jews are existing. awesome, and they make super great space lasers that cause wildfires in California. Um, <laughs> that that's I'm pretty sure that's what she said. I, I'm looking her up on the fly. If there's a more yeah. a listener who's like super well versed in this, or God forbid, Marjorie Taylor Green is listening to this right now, yeah. I want to hear. I, I clicked on the first news article and I did Command F, find Jew, and I couldn't find anything. <laughs> So I think I'm on the wrong article. GOP congresswoman blamed wildfires on secret Jewish space lasers. Mm, okay. Secret Jewish space lasers. Um, there, there was a dude who um who made a, a parody on TikTok. I wish I, I can't remember his name. You can find a dude if you guys are following me on TikTok. Uh, you will find a duet I did of his vid. But he um he basically did it, it um Jewish lasers in space, but in the style of Fiddler on the Roof. So he came into frame. He was like, Jewish lasers in space? Sounds crazy, no? But here in our little village of Anatev, <laughs> he went to the home. It was so good. The oh. lasers tradition. Yeah. Oh, it was Here, so I good. found a full list of Marjorie oh, Taylor Greene's views. Of shit, of shit that she said? Yeah, this is, um, I'll, I would take this with a grain of salt because it's by Jonathan Chait, who I think has gotten canceled a couple times for just- Oh, amazing. Let's go. Uh, um. Okay. Here's, uh, her views include, but are no means limited to the following, uh, the QAnon conspiracy theory, which holds that Donald Trump is secretly fighting a worldwide child sex slavery ring that was supposed to culminate in master mass arrest of his political opposition is worth listening to, uh, Muslims don't belong in government. 9-11 was an inside job. Uh, all the school shootings were staged. Uh, Zionist supremacists are secretly masterminding Muslim immigration to Europe in a scheme to outbreed white people, uh, leading Democratic officials should be executed. Um, the most recent green view to be unearthed comes via Eric uh, Hananoki. Just over two years ago, Green suggested in a Facebook post that wildfires in California were not natural. Forests don't just catch fire, you know. Rather, the blazes had been started in conjunction with the Rothschilds using a space laser in order to clear room for a high-speed rail project. Wow. <laughs> Which is so funny to me because it's like if they wanted there to just be a high speed rail project, they'd just be like, okay, we're gonna make a high speed rail project. People yeah. just tear down Come trees all the time with no excuse. Okay, if there okay, if there's one stereotype we all know about Jews is that they are thrifty, is that they like to not spend too much money. A space laser would be so expensive. You're so that, right. That's, that's so expensive. Credit the Jews with a bit more intelligence, you know? Like, <laughs> just a little bit more economic and, you know? That, what I don't understand is what is a space laser? Like- I think it's, I think it's something uh, along the lines of like Austin Powers, like, like Dr. Evil. <laughs> okay, we're gonna start a laser on the moon, just like that, dude. And like, and then there's like a laser that's gonna like burn a path through California. I guess that's her idea. I'm, it sounds like a movie. It's a movie villain move. Movie villain move. Yeah, yeah, which is what all of these conspiracies are. It's like you know we're yeah. not in control, and everyone else is in control, and they know exactly how everything's gonna go down, and exactly gonna go down the way they want it to. The Don the th Donald Trump is protecting a from a child sex slavery ring. I mean, he's a pedophile. If he was doing yeah. that. How altruistic would he be? Be like, I'm going to give up my pedophilia. Yeah, that reminds me. There's something else like, 
I remember I was watching uh, the H3 podcast and Ethan Klein, he said, um, given like the videos that we've seen of Michael Jackson and the way he interacts with like the young boys that he has, he says, and like knowing that they did have sleepovers and all this stuff, he said, is there any chance in my mind that he did not molest those kids? And Ethan was like, no, there's no chance in my mind that he didn't do that. He 100% did. And when you look at Donald Trump and you see like those weird photos with um, Ivanka, um, like sitting on his lap and everything that he said, I know. is there any chance that he's 100% not a pedophile? Is there any chance that he has z- that never crossed his mind, never in his actions? I don't think that's possible. Yeah. You he's, know? he's one of the most just like vile, disgusting people to ever grace this earth. And now he's not on any apps. His phone is I know. a big old hole of nothing, which makes me so happy. I know, but I almost think like, what is it like to experience life in his body now? Like, I, I immediately think like, what must life be like for him? Is it, I wonder if he's like, just to, like trying to like sneak a peek at other people's phones. Like, oh, what's going on? What, Eric, can I say something? Eric, give me your phone. Yeah. <laughs> well, did you see like my idea for like a new reality show? Which is that we- Yes, I think so. Wait, remind me again we lock Trump in a room with nothing but a bop it for company. And we yes! stream the whole, and we stream the whole thing on Twitch for a charity of our choosing. And only if he gets a high score, is he allowed out and uh, to have five seconds of looking at Eric's Twitter feed. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. Oh man. What is it like though, to live a totally social media cleansed life? If you're also the worst person in the world. Yeah, well, I can imagine if you've never had social media to have no social media, like just keeping that outside of your life and just living sort of more naturally into human nature. But the idea of like being so entrenched with social media and then being ripped, having ripped away from you, I can't imagine what that must be like. It's also because, you know, he doesn't read. So, you know, so like what material does he consume on a, mm. on a, on a daily basis? Like what, what does he use to stimulate himself, you know? Well, I don't like that <laughs> choice of words. Yeah. Ugh. No. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, maybe a bop it. And it goes in his Maybe butt. a bop it. Well, because another thing that's really interesting about Trump, say what you, he doesn't drink. And I find that very interesting. He He's doesn't? Never, he has never touched alcohol. Can you imagine what he would be like if he did? No. Uh, d- no. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want I to imagine either. anything. I just think it's so. I mean, I don't know how he's going to survive these next four years because his body must be deteriorating. I, I mean, he's oh, yeah, just, no. All he eats is McDonald's filet o fish, which are delicious. Did you, but did you see the. I've never had a filet o fish. Really? I I've think only it's ever, worthwhile. I've only ever been to McDonald's three times in my life. But could you imagine if you had? Lucas on McDonald's. I mean, what would it yeah. be like? <laughs> oh, <laughs> too much oh, I, power. Oh, too I don't want to know. It's fucked up. <laughs> Wait, what were you gonna oh. say earlier? I was gonna say, did, uh, did you see like the? It was a BuzzFeed challenge of like um trying to live eat like Donald Trump for a day, and like every oh and, yeah, like, it was, both people were like, I feel terrible. This is <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> it was basically just drinking Coke and ha- drinking Coke and having burgers. Uh, for like every meal it was just it was awful well remember when those football players came to the white house and they came to the spread of mcdonald's and they had to pretend it was like awesome like oh my god you go to the white house you expect i mean i don't know about you but i grew up watching Corey in the house which was Mm -hmm. a show about the white house chef so you'd think that shit would be fancy yeah (laughs) you go and see like catered mcdonald's Wait, I, w- I want to ask you, if you were the president, what is something, not like a hugely special meal, but what would you expect on a regular basis from your chef that you might ask specially for? Like rack of lamb, shit mm. like that. I mean, honestly, if I were president, I think I would cook the way presidents golf. Like if I needed like a Ooh. day off, I would just like cook with my oh. private chef. Um you know how everyone's like, Trump's always golfing. Like, if I were yeah. president, people would be like, that Gabby's always cooking. Like, yeah. she's never looking at policies. She's just getting fat in office. <laughs> what about you? What would, what would you get canceled for if you were the president? What would I get? Oh, my God. What would I get canceled for? 
Oh God. I mean, I don't mean in your life. I mean, like if you were president Mm -hmm. of new behavior, you took up to like, you know, take uh, away some of the stress of being the president and then people in the tabloids Uh, wrote about you. Oh, maybe walking around naked. (laughs) Maybe walking around naked in the white house while like, (laughs) like maybe people are protesting a decision I made and I just walk out with like, (laughs) dick flopping around just booty over here. Just like, I can imagine the New York Post being like, (laughs) naked president is a disgrace. (laughs) You know, they have those really crass puns on like the New York Post. Oh yeah. Do you know what the worst thing is? I would probably have a a t-shirt on, but nothing, but no bottoms of any sort. That's probably what I would do. And uh, yeah. That makes sense. What about you? What would you, what do you think you would get canceled for as president? I also like to walk around naked yeah. a lot. Um, that's a big one. I don't know, maybe like, um, you know, it's the same thing I get canceled for in like shared office spaces, like using the amenities too much. Like I would mm. always get so, like I would, I worked in offices that had a lot of like free food and free alcohol and I would eat it and drink it. And then they'd like get mad at me about it. You'd be like, you're supposed to be working. I'm like, you have this here for us for me to eat. And not only that, I order it. I used to cater, I used to order all the food that we ate. Oh my God. All the groceries. All that's, the- a, that's a dog shit job. That's a dog shit job. It is. Wait, is there- it's also an enormous amount of power because you literally just order whatever you feel like and everyone deals with it. Cause you can't please everybody. I mean, you just yeah. actually cannot please everyone. So you just get whatever pleases you that day. And if people are mad, they're mad, but whatever, they're getting free food. Yeah. I remember um, the last- job I had that was like a proper job I um I ordered uh I had like a sweet green salad for lunch and Ooh, nice. I I unfortunately in like the place where we kept all our stuff and like would eat I accidentally left it open right when the health manager came the day the health manager came and my boss he was very nice about it he was like dude you, you can't do this again I was like I'm so sorry he was like just you, you can't do this again I was like I know I know I know um, what he, sweet he green salad was it out of curiosity because I love me some sweet green I think it was like a winter sort of turkey and walnut Ooh. with like a honey vinaigrette or something it was really oh, nice that shit's so good I used to get the kale caesar with the parmesan mm. crisps Ooh. Oh, sweet really green's nice. one of those things that's like it's a product of like the worst parts of late stage capitalism yeah and but it's i will quite nice but i it's will never nice. let it go <laughs> yeah like, i haven't had sweet green since i since i uh did that job but i would have it again i haven't had it though <laughs> it traumatized you no <laughs> no i oh i that actually reminds me i did actually there there are foods that I was traumatized out of eating and I wonder if there are for you because like I um there the very first time I got high I um I ate a bunch of food including uh thin mints and easy mac and then I threw up after not 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 like I I wasn't like double fisting like easy mac and thin mints but I had them at, at some point and then I threw it all up and then afterwards I couldn't touch them couldn't eat either no Mm. I don't have any foods like that but the first time I got high was very Mm. eventful for me because oh no I I think I was scared of weed like I actually Mm -hmm. think I like had a phobia thinking it would like make me a different person or something oh I was too definitely I was I was a goody goody I was terrified of weed and I smoked when I was like 16 or so and I remember Mm. it very vividly we were in the park uh I think it was like Riverside Park um and then I took a hit and I had to sit down for a second and I like (gasps) fainted I've never I've never fainted for in my life I fainted from weed and I had like a oh my god I had like a 15 second dream about um it was like everything was like pastel and like we were at like a Gracie mansion where the mayor lives and Dobby from Harry Potter was there. Uh, it was just this dream. And then like everyone wow. was going like, Gabby, Gabby, isn't everything wonderful? And I realized that when I was hearing Gabby, Gabby, it was actually my friends going, Gabby, Gabby, what the fuck? Are you okay? And I'd oh been passed God. out for like three seconds. Um, oh, so, you, I, so just in those three seconds, you had just the most crazy the dream. The most crazy dream. 
And oh my God. I bit through my lip and it was like <gasps> scarred. So I had to pretend I fell to my mom, oh no. obviously. And then I went to school the next day and I had this busted up lip and all these people were asking me, how'd you get the busted up lip? And I had to be like, weed. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. <laughs> Which is so funny because I really believe it was like weed is probably better for you than alcohol. Oh, it is. It by far. Absolutely. It was not the weed itself that <laughs> did that to me. I think my phobia made me faint. Oh, so it was your anxiety that built up that like caused like a panic attack and made you faint or something? Or I think maybe, I don't know, or like feeling like the wooziness of like, cause you know, you smoke yeah. weed and then like you actually get high and those are two separate times. I feel like for yes. me at least, like I had to smoke weed a couple times before I actually felt it. Um, what you I, had with weed is what I had with stand up. Because well, I've, I've talked to, well, well I, I've talked about how I nearly fainted. Doing yes, you have. Right? Yeah. 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 So, like, so the idea of like the anxiety build up and then like, and then you finally do it like that, that, that feels very close to me. And so I thought, oh, <laughs> but yeah, I, the first time I got high, it was with edibles. And oh, oh, yeah. It was, uh, and it was, it was good at first, but then it wasn't so good. Mm. Um, did I ever tell this to you or no? no? Oh yeah. So I, um, so I, <laughs> I was a freshman in college and I bought them from this dude. It was a, I bought two quarters of a brownie and I was told, um, eat the first quarter. If you don't feel anything for two hours, eat the second quarter, but make sure oh, you, you wait did two tell hours. me this. Oh, I did, did. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Um, and you Basically, didn't wait. I, you didn't wait two hours, did you? No, I did. I followed the instructions exactly. I waited two hours, and then I ate the second quarter, and then everything happened. <laughs> and like, I got so high that if I was looking at an object, I would feel like I was becoming that object. Like if I was looking at a glass, I would feel like my body was becoming the shape of a glass. And and then I started imagining sensations happening to me. But before I did, I I <laughs> ran to see the dude I bought them from. And he was like, what is it? His girlfriend was there. And I was like, dude, everything I look at, I become. <laughs> I think, therefore, I become. Therefore, I'm high. <laughs> yeah. And then I ran back to my place. And then I, I started imagining sensations. I started imagining myself floating. I felt like I was floating. I then imagine I imagine different parts of my body getting longer and bigger, inflating and stuff. And I would, and then I am I made a squatting position, mm. and I imagined my balls descending infinitely into the abyss. Oh yeah, and, you told me about this. The infinite, yeah. the infinity balls. Yeah, the infinity balls. And then, and then I got sick, and then I started throwing up, and I threw up four times, and I knew when I was done because I could taste like the layers of food. It was Beautiful. really that is was, so yeah. That is so romantic. Edibles it was, are- It was gorgeous. For anyone yeah. who's listening who hasn't tried weed, just don't try it for the first time with edibles. Maybe just like no. wait a little bit. Don't do that. <laughs> and if you do, we don't necessarily endorse your choice, but if you do, please do it with people you trust <laughs> and to do it as safely as possible. Because yeah, and don't I, do edibles for your first time. Don't be I, like me. I will say I miss this feeling of um, just getting weed from some kid like mm. that is gone. Like I remember when I used to buy weed like in college, I used to get it was like rare to have a delivery service, but somehow mm -hmm. I got in touch with one and I used to like go into this man's just car and you know, it was just, I was in a car with some man and he, you know, I couldn't ask if it was like an indica or a sativa or whatever. He just handed me a bag and I was like, thank you. And you're just like, this is weed. <laughs> hate him. And you I was like, now. this is weed. Great. <laughs> and now everything's like, oh, you can get this crazy hybrid and here's all this adjectives that it is. And God, I sound like such a boomer, but it's just different. Like <laughs> when I was a kid, we just <laughs> bought one weed. Can I have one weed? <laughs> Yeah, I went into that car and I said, can I have a weed? Can I have a weed? <laughs> and he said, yeah, that'll be $160 a gram <laughs> if you're going to ask me for a weed. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've, I've never actually done that. I was once at a friend's apartment 
and he just had a delivery guy come and would like just a case of every variety you could want. He was like, oh, Lucas, do you want some? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll get some. And I got just like a little vial. It came in, like just a little canister. And I was amazed at like how organized it was. And so like it was almost it was like Uber Eats, but for yeah. weed. For weed, it's really nice. I was really impressed. Have you seen High Maintenance? I've not seen High Maintenance. I have a friend who's in that show, though. Oh my god, who? Yeah, um, her name is uh, I don't know if uh, her name is Mari Uchida. She's an actor. Uh, I know her from college, and yeah, I think she's. I'm pretty sure she's in the show. I'm looking her up. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think it wasn't like a huge role, but I know that she was in it. Oh yes, I might. I actually might recognize her from it. Um, but every it's co- the kind of thing I feel like it's becoming like Law and Order, where if you live in New York and you're an actor, you're probably going to be on high maintenance at some point, especially yeah. if you're a comedian. Oh yeah, um, I, I just googled uh, high maintenance Mart, and then I found a picture of her. Yeah, there she is. Oh yay! That makes me happy. Um, yeah. By the way, should we do what we said we were kind of yeah. going to do on this? Let's so do it. Lucas and I were thinking because we were going to go solo and it's Friday night and we're alive mm-hmm. that we were going to try and do a virtual drinking game. And yeah. Just play it for you guys. Um, yeah. I have here, I have a, I also have alcohol, but I have a plate of limes. Oh. Just a oh. nice little, I'm not going to take this many shots, but it's nice. Wait, to, are you having tequila? Yeah, I've got tequila with me. What, oh, what do you What good. do you have? I have a uh, screwball peanut butter whiskey. What? Oh shit! Shit! Fuck! I used to. I had that. And this is like the smoothest whiskey you can buy. It is. It is, so, it is good. so good. We had it in Vegas. Literally, it was like the most beloved. I got Sylvie got me a bottle of it for my birthday. Oh yeah, it's a great and I made and do you know what I put it in? I put it in uh Mexican hot chocolate the other day. Oh, oh yeah. It was oh, so nice. Incredible. It's too good. This tequila too smells good. terrible now thinking about <laughs> <laughs> I love tequila though. Seriously, I love tequila. Um Genuine. for those listeners, uh if you're you can skip this part, I guess, if you don't want to have two unhinged hosts. Yeah. Uh, um do shots, yeah. It's a, two shots in front of you. I keep looking for remote drinking games. The only thing I find is Never Have I Ever. <laughs> yeah, we, we just... can do Never Have I Ever. Or I... we, or we could do a Would You Rather, a game of Would You Rather. Ooh, Would You Rather? Okay. Yeah. But what is the? Is it like Would You Rather blank or blank? And then if you'd yeah. rather do one, you drink. Like, how does it work? I don't. I've so never been in a sorority, Lucas. <laughs> yeah. It's also that I am a lightweight and there and I, I would very easily fill up too fast or be like, oh, I've hit my limit. I will get sick if I do more. So that that is a threshold I can reach very easily. Yeah, same. I'm probably gonna we're we're yeah. we're hyping this up, but I'm probably gonna have like one shot yeah. and be like, well, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm pouring myself number one. There we go. Okay, so we just is it we answer would you rathers or we give a would you rather and then we guess what the other person will answer in regard mm. to would you yeah, rather yeah, yeah. and if we get it right they have to do a shot and if we get it wrong or, we, have we have to do a shot okay great yeah um okay let me think of one then would you rather be a like washed up child star who was in like a couple of big Disney movies, but as an adult can never work again as an actor, but lives like a fulfilled mm. life. Or would you rather have had like a happy childhood, but be have a very tumultuous like adult life where you're famous, but you're like kind of too in the spotlight? Do you, okay, so do you know which one you think I would choose? Yes. Okay. The one that I would choose, I would choose the latter because I want a solid foundation as a child. Oh, I didn't think, I thought you'd choose the former because you want to have a solid adult foundation. So I'm wrong. So I have to take the shot, right? You have to take a shot. <laughs> okay. I'm doing the thing you do in college where it's like, first yeah. you, do, you have salt and then you take mm-hmm. the shot. Yep. Ah, I'm such a baby. 
Oh, look at you. <laughs> it's a face. Your face squanched up so much. It's oh, worth yeah. noting before this that Sylvie got me two glasses of water. Not one, <laughs> two. That's adorable. That's so cute. <laughs> okay, you go next. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, this is a little bit um a little bit more whimsical. Um, okay. I, I actually wrote this one. Would you rather every time you sneeze, Justice Kavanaugh's teeth rotate 90 degrees? Or every time you cough, Rudy Giuliani's feet turn into tongues for five <laughs> minutes. I'd rather Rudy Giuliani's what, what, feet. What, 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 what? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Was that the one you thought I would choose? Yeah. Okay, so then do I have to take <laughs> Screw it. I'll do one just because I, I want to catch up. So, okay. One, two, three. There we go. Woo! Smooth. Going down smooth. It's so good. Um, okay. Would you rather... You get the life you've always wanted. You're like a successful person, happy relationship. Um, but every time you drink water, you shart just a little. Or you have a happy life, everything you've always wanted, perfect relationship, everything is great, except your name as a brand is attached to like selling like a really harmful chemical forever. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just thought of that now. And now I know which one I think you'd choose. Oh, that's, oh God. <laughs> I think I would go sharding. I knew it. I knew you'd go sharding. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think you could handle being the the name brand for like the worst chemical in the world. Oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> that was a rough one. I'm thinking of these on the fly. I didn't write it. That was really <laughs> tough. Advanced. I um pour one out, uh, I, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Um, should we should we eventually make listener submissions a drinking game too? <laughs> oh, or we or we take listener submissions of would you rather's. Ooh. I think yeah. that could be a very good idea. Oh, I like that. Yeah, our listeners are super creative. I would oh, love it. So here, so I take another one now. Boy. Do it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> a little smile. The thing with that peanut butter whiskey is it's like uh it's delicious to sip or put in other things, but no. just sh shooting anything, very unnatural, very yeah. wrong. The body is not built for it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay. Would you rather every time you type on a keyboard, a different finger turns into your dad's penis? <laughs> or <laughs> I'm not okay. <laughs> or every time you um or every time you turn on the gas on your stove. No, 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 actually, no, you get around that too easily. Um, or every time you look at a clock, um, it turns into your grandmother's labia, the hands. Okay, I have I have an answer, but I also have a couple follow-up questions. So do I know it's my dad's penis or do- Oh yeah, <laughs> it's unmistakable. <laughs> I'm sure whatever it looks like, which I do not know, by the way, <laughs> I'm sure it is not that distinct. Maybe my mother will come on and be like, actually, it's the, no, I don't think it's that distinct. 
Oh god. Oh my god. Someone's gonna find this podcast in 10 years and be like, meet the girl comedian who talks about her dad's dick. <laughs> you call yourself a girl comedian? That's what like publications call everyone. Like the girl a comedian. Girl comedian. Or, or a the- lady comic. <laughs> lady comic Gabby Jordan. <laughs> For you it'd be like, meet the skinny half black guy who happens to be famous on TikTok. <laughs> Do you know what's funny? I was interviewed recently for um, a, 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 an online Jewish journal called The Forward, and the headline was like, meet the Ashkenazi British Sudanese comedian taking over TikTok. What? Like it said, like, every part of my background. I was like, Jesus, okay. Well, as if it's relevant. <laughs> like- well, what the subject was, it was um, the writer contacted me and asked me, like, hey, I want to ask you about, like, how ethnicity and your background plays into your comedy. And I was like, sure, yeah. So it was very... Yeah. It's very much the reason for it. So and you have very, a couple jokes well about married. it, about how like yeah, you, know, exactly. you thought you were a hostage. Anyway, I'd what? rather see my grandmother's labia on the clock. I'm not saying I want to see it. I'm just saying like... You're saying you want to see your grandmother's labia. You, that's what you're saying. <laughs> you, can avoid a, you can avoid a clock. I can't avoid typing. I like type all the time. Yeah. it's that, That's what that's the one I knew you go for. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll take the shot anyway because I'm so cool. triggered. But... <laughs> Did you like, wait, did you think of the one that you just said on, oh no, you did think of that on the spot. Damn. Yeah, I'm, I literally, I just thought of mine on the spot as well. Oh my God, you poor thing. (laughs) Why did I choose tequila for this? Oh my God, what's wrong with me? Okay, we'll do do a couple more if I can think of more. Would you rather... Mm. Okay, I'm trying to formulate this thought. You could become Take it a, you could become a bird, mm. but every time you became a bird, you couldn't choose whether it happened. It just happened out of nowhere. And I see. You, you'd be anywhere in the world. You might have to turn into a bird. Mm-hmm. Or every time. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Every time you jerked off, when you came, you became a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay. So every time I jerk off, how long would being a bird last in that scenario? Well, like like five, ten minutes. It depend it would depend on like how good the orgasm was, I guess. Like the the better it was, the longer you'd be a bird for it. I thought you were about to say like the better the orgasm I achieved, the better bird I could I could become. Yeah, like, no, you'd be a hummingbird if it's a bad one. Like if I had be... bad rhythm, I'd be a penguin, but if I had good, I'd be an albatross, you know? Well, yeah, because you'd be a flightless bird. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would take jerking off one. That of course I would go for that one. I know, I knew it. I knew you would go for that one. I didn't mean to give you an accidentally obvious one. I think that they're both kind of terrible options. Yeah, but at least like with jerking off, I can like I can prepare for it. Like yeah. the thing is like with jerking off as a dude, there's already so much not strategy, there's already so much method around it because you have to clean right. up after yourself. There's like every every guy has his like how he likes to clean up, how he likes, so it's, there's a lot of, yeah, it's there's zen. a lot of logistical stuff. And so that yeah. would just be another thing I would add into it. I'd be like, okay, for five to 10 minutes, I'd be a bird. And then I, and then I, and then I'd be okay. Like, How to do the bird prep. <laughs> exactly. No, for sure. Cause with turning into a bird on the fly, you don't know when it's going to be inconvenient for you to be a bird. Exactly. But the same situations in which you'd want to jerk off are the same situations in yeah. which you'd want to mutate. It's also that like when you have like like that I think that would only enhance your post nut clarity. You oh, know, you'd be like, oh, I just came and now I'm flying. Life's great. No, no, no. <laughs> not only that, but you would be like, I'm no longer human for at least a brief part of my day. Well, like that's, that's a beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. This is this is a win win. I don't. Maybe is, yeah. Maybe after everyone jerks off, they should become a bird. Maybe we should try and pass that as a bill into Congress. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> imagine a congressperson just very somberly being like so uh on zoom <laughs> they don't host shit on zoom for congress everybody goes in in person no matter how inconvenient it is day after the fucking insurrection they're back in there being like all right well let's yeah. certify in person like it could have been an email <laughs> it could have been have you seen the video of like um i think it's like a 
it's like a big Zoom call or something of a bunch of like uh, government members in Portugal. And there's a dude who doesn't realize his camera's on and he starts taking up a pair of panties and he starts like unfolding them and starts sniffing them on camera. And then he realized, oh my God, his camera's on. It's the wildest shit. Clearly it's everyone's so doing Jeffrey Tubin stuff. And like, yeah, I just don't understand it because like I personally like to jerk off when the camera is not on. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's not very only fans positive, but simply I mean that on a Zoom call, it wouldn't occur, <laughs> it wouldn't occur yeah. to me. Okay, I have um I have um I have a would you rather. Okay. Would you rather um anytime you have sex could sometimes couldn't happen while you have sex, but it's possible that it could happen while you have sex that um a magic screen appears right at your point uh right as you're approaching orgasm uh and on this screen this magic screen that appears in front of you is an image of your parents having really kinky sex. Would you rather that or no i wouldn't <laughs> or every time your parents have sex magic screens appear in front of both of their faces and they have to watch you having sex whoa that's a really tough one holy fuck yeah. um but let, give me give me a moment to think of like what you would say i'm trying to think like what you would go for yeah no i don't i don't even know <laughs> Yeah, this, this is, is liberating. I'm gonna be honest. I'm very proud of myself for making this up on the spot. I'm very proud of myself right now. Um, I what would Gabby say? What would Jesus do? <laughs> I hmm. if Jesus I think was I, I think forced. I, oh, you think? I think I, I think I know. I think I know what you would say. I think I know. Okay. Um. I think. Okay. I hate to say it. I think I'd rather them see me because that's what I was thinking. They don't have as many years to live. <laughs> <laughs> and just and just objectively over the course of time, my parents having been in a happy marriage for 25 years have probably had more sex than I have. So mm -hmm. they've like had their fill a little bit. <laughs> they've had their turn. <laughs> They feed their dues time after time. <laughs> I've done my sentence. What would oh, you yeah. say? I'm going to give you the exact same question right back. Well, well, the difference is that my parents are no longer together. So. Oh, I mean, it, it, sure. But maybe them having sex with like some other, like your mom having sex with some random person. Yeah, I... I would rather make them watch me. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm being selfish. I just. No, I understand. Me too. Well, I couldn't also, do it. Parents are supposed to make ultimate sacrifices for their children. Exactly. So. <laughs> Not the other way around. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> the sacrifice. Yeah. No, it would also be weird if you were having sex and you saw them having sex with each other. Cause you'd be like, they've been divorced for so long. I don't understand. <laughs> like, <laughs> how'd this happen? <laughs> The girl would be like, dude, are you okay? Like, we were having sex. You'd be like, I don't, I had a vision. <laughs> <laughs> I have a vision of my parents getting back together. And then I start crying. <laughs> I have to reunite the parent trap style. <laughs> Every time I have sex, it gives me hope for my parents. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, wow. Oh, that's phenomenal. Okay. So I gave you the same question right back. I predicted it. That's probably out of my window. There's been oh, okay, okay. There has been trucks out of my window all fucking day. Not ambulances, oh, just random trucks. Okay. I don't know what. Oh, well. They're listening Some to the cool podcast. guys doing shit in town. Cool guys. You ever see that vine that was like, what's better than this? Guys being dudes. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> What could be better than this? Guys being dudes. Guys being dudes. <laughs> trucks being trucks. <laughs> Parents having sex. <laughs> that, that reminds me, I did an audition when I was in college and I, I was doing a monologue from Macbeth. Mm. And, but for some reason, I don't know if I was nervous or in, or in but what I, the phrasing I said, I will be uh, performing Macbeth from the Scottish play. <laughs> That was the phrasing I used. And, and so I was, play, I was, um, it was like winter general. So all of the different plays that are going to be done sure. in winter quarter. And so there are like a bunch of directors and like stage managers and stuff in the, in the audience. And 
every single one of them burst out laughing. <laughs> every single one of them was like, what did you just say? And then I did like a goofy little bow. I was like, I just got to honor that. This is what and makes I, us yeah. comedians. It's not that, yeah. sometimes I think comedians are not all actually funny. I mean, I think you're funny, but I think most comedians are not all funny. It's just that we have so much shit that went on in our lives that we were weird about. Yeah. It's like, if we didn't remark on this, it would be fucking insane. Exactly. I, like I, 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 I think if Rudy Giuliani were like more self-aware, he would be a comedian. Cause I would love to see him do material. Like I simped for Donald Trump for so long. What was wrong with me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he never but I, but I will say, I think, well, first off, I think you are hilarious. And that's the oh, reason why I, I wanted to do a podcast with you. But I do think that like, I think shit happens to everyone, but it takes a certain person with a certain skill set mental skill set to catalog those things and then and then synthesize them in a way that's that that is entertaining so it yeah. takes like it takes like someone who has like the right the right chemistry also with like weird shit and you have to have both no i agree i think you're right so, yeah oh that's another good would you rather would you rather mm. you couldn't do a comedy ever again anymore but you would never not be super rich or you could do comedy for the rest of your life um but you would never make quite enough to like support like a family that's too real because like a lot of comedians actually do have to deal with that what this is a choice between is basically being able to support your family or follow your dreams mm-hmm I would like to believe both are possible, but in this, would you rather, like, they're not? Oh, God. Okay, so in this, in both ends of the scenario, I have, like, let's say I have, like, wife and children. Is that, yes. is that the, yeah. Yes. Their I think long, I know what you do. Yeah. Their, their lives and well-being are more important than my dreams. Mm. That's what I would say. I would, I would say the same. I've, all, I've always wanted a family, and I think I Me would too. Like, give yeah. up a lot uh for it and I think it's weird too because like a lot of people uh there's a lot of people who are like my age and they're women and they specifically kind of say they don't want kids and I understand why because it's like you know mm -hmm. for women a lot of the times it's been like kid people get roped into this like domesticity thing of like if well if you're the wife you also get to like make the dinner on time for the husband and like you know you do everything for mm -hmm. the husband um and I feel like because I was never straight and never fell into that, I like went the extra domestic route. And I was like, well, I want to be the apron wife so bad. <laughs> like, oh. I want to have the family, have the kids. And it like, it's hard for me to see like people in their 40s who I know who just kind of like were working so hard, they almost forgot because I feel like some oh, people yeah. are so like, oh, I don't want to be part of the patriarchy that I don't want to have a family. But having a family is fucking great too. So just- yeah. Take all that with a grain of salt. I don't know. I definitely like, I think more than, I think it's just, that is something I find very, I'd say that's like at the, I'm, I'm getting, I'm just saying I'm babbling right now, but I think that at like a heart of feminism and like just about, and just like knowing yourself and owning your gender, sexual, all at the end of it is just like, is about just empowering you to do whatever you want in life. And if you True. want to have a family, if you want to be a mom, if you want to wear that apron and make cookies and shit, that's exactly what you should do. And, and so- I, I do. I want to wear yeah. an apron I want to cookies. wear an apron as well and make cookies as well. Oh my God. Well, you do wear those leggings really well. I do wear the leggings really well. Yeah, I do. They, <laughs> they, they hug my little touch. They fantastic on you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, I, saw, I, I was looking up and I saw, oh yeah, for people who don't know, I just dropped merch um fuck yeah like, lucas drop merch by the merch yes and uh, and i want to talk to you about like uh maybe setting up some merch of our own as well which i think would be a good idea yes in time we, we shall but um we are we are a factory yes we are a factory. <laughs> no we have to we have to leave that for dan frank that belongs to dan frank and it should always belong to dan frank but oh no wait no wait that no i i I thought for a second that was a stand-up, but no, that was just something we came up with on the podcast. Yep, we that's came ours. up with it that's on ours. the podcast. Yeah, that's ours. We're but a um, I found I found out that the um, the company I use to distribute and produce my merch also does leggings, so I was like, oh, I'm doing branded leggings. 100%. Holy shit! Can I buy Lucas branded leggings? 
oh yeah you oh you can very soon and the great thing is that they have leggings with pockets they have leggings for uh ladies that are plus size they have leggings for the gents it is awesome and i cannot fucking wait and are I the actually, leggings gonna say across the butt this sudanese comedian <laughs> is taking over new york's tiktok scene <laughs> no it's just gonna be a url to that article it's just gonna be <laughs> Just a fucking URL on the leggings. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I had a friend of mine uh, reach out because um, she was like, Lucas, you you did merch and you didn't talk to me. And I was like, I was like, what would you want to do? You want to draw some stuff? Let's do merch. And, uh, and she was like, OK, I'm going to draw you uh, in leggings to put on your leggings. I was like, OK, awesome. Great. <laughs> <laughs> OK. She's very self-conscious about it because she wants some, um, she wants Drew, she's a friend of mine from high school and she wants drew a portrait of me and it, okay. You've seen Napoleon Dynamite, right? Yes. I don't remember it super well though. Okay. Do I you saw remember, when I was a kid. Do you remember the drawing that Napoleon does of that girl? Yes, I do. <laughs> it was not unlike that. <laughs> oh my God. That's amazing. Yeah. Emerson, if you're watching or listening, I love you, but it, I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it's like my aunt Barbara, when she was trying to be nice to me uh, one year for my birthday, she made a portrait of me. She like painted a portrait of me. And uh, oh. it was sweet of her to do that. But the portrait of me, I look like Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a crazy. It's like me if I were. It looks like me, but it does. It looks like me if I was like super ugly. It's the exact same <laughs> person of me, but if I was like hideous. Um, and I love Barbara, so I don't want. And she won't listen yeah. to this. <laughs> She's in South Africa, but uh, it's. Or they don't have podcasts. Yeah, no, there's no podcasts in South Africa. <laughs> I mean, I know that my my sweet gran, uh, who is in South Africa, hmm. I. I mean, she has internet and everything, but uh, she doesn't know how to open a PDF. So when I oh. sent her, like, for example, my recommendation letters from my professors for grad school, mm -hmm. I, because my mom was like, she'll love to see it. Um, oh. I had to send them in the body of the email because she won't open a PDF. So I can't I imagine see. her listening <laughs> to a podcast. If my gran is listening, that would Wouldn't be- Wouldn't it be funny if, like, greatest. she- if she couldn't open a PDF, but she knows how to like see what other people are listening to on Spotify. If she couldn't open a PDF, but she was like, oh yeah, come town. That's my favorite podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Your mother loves the Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> Aren't those red scare girls a little much? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my God. Um, on that note, should we get into listeners? <laughs> yes, let's do it. I'm I'm gonna pull up the um, Google Doc. This is exciting because I think we just got a listener submission that you know I never want to break any anonymity on mm -hmm. this podcast, but but do you know who it is? It's from Sylvie and it's about <gasps> me. <laughs> <gasps> she just wrote it in now. I just saw it. Okay. Okay, wait, She's... where what where is it? It's at the bottom. I want to read it. You should read it. Okay, you read it. It's at the very bottom of the Two Nosy Meerkats Anonymous survey. I can text it to you if you want. Oh, yeah, please do. Yeah, let's do that. I um, I got it. Here, just sent it. Oh, amazing. Thank you. Uh, okay, all right, here we are. All right, so uh, listeners, I am Sylvie right now. You will imagine that I am Sylvie, Gabby's lovely girlfriend. Yeah, tu sabe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. Cuban and so hot. <laughs> okay. Go on. Listeners, imagine I am a Cuban American woman right now. That's what mm -hmm. I want. Okay. <laughs> okay. Not my own weirdest phobia, but my girlfriend is terrified of having her belly button touched or even touching her own belly button. To wash it, she'll lay flat on her back in the bathtub and let it soak with soapy water and then scrub across because she refuses to put a Q-tip or a sponge or a finger in there. It's crazy. I can't really touch her stomach anywhere near the area of her belly button either. I love to roast her about it and I'm curious if Lucas specifically thinks this is strange. <gasps> so you just, you can't touch your belly button? 
I cannot touch my belly button. I don't know what it's about. It tickles what is, me. It's I it, see. It's ticklish. And when I touch like in the center of it, I find that it gives me this feeling that's similar to like shock. Like I feel Whoa. like a shock through my body when it's such I can't imagine putting a Q-tip in there. This uh, is a weird, this is a weird thought, but are you aware of any trauma you had while being born? Uh, not especially, no, not super. Okay. I haven't read about it. Uh, I'm wondering <laughs> if there well was versed. any like nerve damage when like the umbilical cord was mm. snapped off or anything like that. I'm just, because this is interesting. Possible. I know sometimes with umbilical cords, the nurse will remove them and sometimes they let like the parent remove them. And I know my dad yeah. removed my umbilical cord and maybe he botched it and did a fucked up job. Wow. Mm. Oh I know that I know you might actually be onto something because a while ago, like I met a midwife in one of my improv classes and okay. I talked to her about birth because I thought it was super interesting. Mm -hmm. And she said that she thinks that she, I asked if pe people can remember their own birth. And she said she thinks they can't, but that you can kind of like imagine what kind of birth you have based on what kind of stuff triggers you. Like when she's helping somebody give birth, for her, the things that are most frustrating are like the births where like the baby won't come out for like a long time where it's like hours and hours of just pushing and pushing. And she knows that when she was being born, she had a very long birth. So she thinks oh. that that's some kind of like birth trauma, which is fucking insane. That's fucking fascinating. I know it really is. So wait, is it trauma surrounding birth that you would, or is it just trauma or is it what just bothers you in general? Like, how would, I'm trying to wonder, like, how. Like, if you were, like, if there was pain for you in your birth, like, maybe that same kind of pain is, like, triggering for you, but you don't know that it's affiliated with your own birth because no one remembers their own birth. Yeah. That's yeah. A, that reminds me, what is your first memory? Ooh, um, I was, I think, like, three, and I was making tie-dye shirts. Oh. <laughs> So what was yours? <laughs> it's That's a, such a lovely memory. Mine is um when I was three years old, my parents took me to a puppet theater production of The Wizard of Oz. And my first memory is of a puppet Wicked Witch of the West melting and me screaming in terror. Oh my God. Okay, well, that's different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not... It was very, very scary. I feel like I would scream in terror about that as an adult, though. So you're it's, onto something. And, and do you know what's on is I had a phobia of puppets for the longest time. Wow. I really had a phobia of puppets for a very long time. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Do you still have a phobia of puppets, or do you feel not like you got anymore? Over it? I'm okay. okay. I'm okay with puppets, but I do have a phobia of snails and slugs, which is just totally different. Yeah, that's entirely different. <laughs> that's yeah. not the same at all. But um, I do respect that. That is valid. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you were like, okay, Gabby, this is the time to be supportive. Do not judge <laughs> for this <laughs> dog shit phobia. Well, I'm a little drunk from these two tequila shots plus the one I'm sipping. And I'm just like hyper cool. aware of the fact that like, it's important not to judge. <laughs> we do have this podcast to judge, but also yeah. not really to judge, you know? Yeah. I don't think we're okay. dicks. Okay. No. Okay. So we, let's, let, let's read another one. Okay. Do you have one pulled up? I, I also have one pulled up. Um, yes. Um, I have another one pulled up. Okay. Okay, so I, this might, we, hold on. Did we read this already? Okay, let me see. Um, so I came out to my best friend a while back and he's- Oh yeah, we supportive. read that, we read oh, that we read one. This? Okay. Yeah. yeah. My mistake. Um, okay, let me switch. Um, I have one we haven't read that's like a, it's really a more of a, just a sentence that's a follow up on another one. So I don't know if you recall the one that we got last week about the uh, anxious virgin. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I think we incorrectly assumed that that person was like in high school or, or kind of young, but they just Ooh. said, um, I think you think most of your listeners are in high school, but I'm actually 24. Um, wow. I don't know if that changes your answers at all. It doesn't really change my answer. I don't think so at all. Um, it is nice to know that we have 24 year olds listening to us. I'm not saying that's any more valid yeah. than like other people listening to us. I just like that our audience. Yeah, that reaches. reminds me actually, like in 2019, I very briefly dated someone who I think was, 
I think was 24 at the time. And before we had sex, she told me that she was a virgin. And so, oh, wow. yeah. And so, yeah, it didn't bother me. And I don't think it's out of the, I don't think it's abnormal or anything. So yeah, totally yeah. fine. Plenty of people lose their virginities like later on yeah. in life. I know, that John, yeah. I know that John Cleese in Monty Python, um, he lost his virginity at 26. Oh, really? I think yeah. Mark Twain lost his virginity even earlier. Uh, or really? sorry, even I, later, sorry. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> I don't mean earlier chronologically. I mean, chronologically, <laughs> he obviously lost his virginity earlier. Mark Twain <laughs> lost his virginity in 1972. <laughs> Mark Twain was long dead when he lost it. He was a victim of necromancy. <laughs> Okay, Will Ferrell was 21, uh, which I don't know why that came up in my Google search. Um, you, you can be honest with me, Gabby. Come on, you can, you can say it. What, what, what is... <laughs> I just searched Mark Twain lost virginity, which I realize is actually maybe not the right combination of words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I feel like I read somewhere that Mark Twain was like in his 30s. Okay. Yeah. I think everyone's different. I really do. Like, it's like I said on yeah. the episode with Bo, like, you know, I, I didn't think when I was having sex that I was losing my virginity. I thought I was just having fun and messing around. And then I thought about it later. I was like, that was totally sex, what we were doing. Yeah. Um, so I think virginity is a total construct. I think anyone's weird. That is absolutely true. About, I remember, yeah, I was talking, I remember I was talking with a friend of mine um, in college who then uh, was, uh, well, now is non-binary. I think still identifies as a lesbian though. Mm -hmm. But they were, when we were talking in college, um, I remember, I, I slightly regret this, but it was it was a moment where I was, uh, it was a teaching moment for me where I was like, oh, you've never had sex then. And then they were like, yeah, I have. It's just been with girls. And I was like, yeah, but it's not been like penetration. And, and they were like, that's not, that's not the limits of sex, man. And I was right. like, oh, I'm an asshole right now. I apologize. I was like, I was just, I didn't even realize how like myopic my definition of right. sex was at the time. Yeah. No, same. And I was having sex with women. I still didn't realize that yeah. sex wasn't just penetration. I mean, it's so ingrained. Um, yeah. Yeah. But you're fine. Right. Listener. No. Yeah. Okay. So here's another one. Um, this is, I like this a lot. Um, I feel like there are two types of comedians, the epitome of confidence and self-esteem for days or secretly even more insecure than the rest of us. Please teach me how to not give a fuck. Um, I would, I'd say though you just, you just described the two halves of a comedian. I don't think there are two types. Ooh, I really like that. That is such a good way to put it. Yeah. Cause I was going to say, we can't teach you how to not give a fuck. We both give a fuck. Yeah, no. <laughs> we both give a lot of fucks. And like, <laughs> I would say that if there's someone who really doesn't give a fuck and has absolutely no insecurities is not someone to be trusted and someone you wouldn't, I wouldn't want to see. Yeah, they're a sociopath. They're exactly. A total sociopath. Yeah, no, for sure. It's like, a, I think the thing with comedians, I don't think it's true that we're like so confident. I think it's just that there we're artsy, but we're not talented. <laughs> Yeah. So there's like people who are artsy, but they dance or they sing and can move, move their body. And there's some people who are artsy with words, but they're mm. actually profound. So they're poets. Yeah. So I think comedians are artsy, but we also like to fuck around. And uh, yeah. in, in order to avoid doing something that isn't artsy, but also to avoid doing something that takes real skill, like dancing, we do comedy. So. Yeah. It's also that I think that like the confidence is something that you put on almost like a mask is just part of your performance. And that and that the insecurity is always there, but the the confidence to to get on stage and to do something with an air of mastery or or like just or trying to do that, that's something that you have to build up to. And that it's not something you have right away maybe some people do just like right away they just they just know exactly what they're doing that fits yeah. people love like they're it's like a prodigy like mozart or mozart or something but um but in general like almost everyone starts off scared shitless and over mm -hmm. time you just get less scared because you've done it a bunch and then right. your confidence builds and then you're able to loose and loosen the tightness of your brain and you can come up with good stuff but yeah. that's basically yeah it's just like 
is it, anytime I see someone, I mean, like in the before times of the pandemic, I remember I would see people occasionally and they would say, they would tell me, oh, this is actually my first time. And every single time I would congratulate them. I'd be like, you got on that stage and said words and you came off that stage and you were, and you're still conscious. You didn't faint. So you should be really proud of yourself because you did something really scary for most people. And mm -hmm. that, and that like the best advice for, I would say for anything artistic is do the thing, fail, dust yourself, dust yourself off, fail better. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's like the best advice, I think. That's super smart. I think Eddie Izzard said something like that where uh, she was like- Oh, it's not original. I totally stole it. I totally no, stole I know. it from somewhere. I, I don't remember I, where though. It wasn't even exactly like that, but um, she said something like, do go up a hundred times and you'll suck the first a hundred times and then you'll do better. And it's yeah. like funny. It's almost like pathological to have that kind of disease where it's like you want to do something so bad that you're willing to eat shit in front of a bunch of people to do it mm -hmm. um i don't know if i would quantify it as brave i feel like brave is being in the er when a covid patient is dying i don't think That's being true. brave but it is like um vulnerable uh in a way so i don't know it's a strange I, I i i agree more with what you said that it's a that's two halves of a comedian that's not too yes. different comedians absolutely uh, yeah so that's that on that okay so here's another one from our friend maxim allen yes i'm looking Hi, at that one as well. gabby and lucas it's maxim i'm still listening to every episode you wonderful meerkats release good keep we love you doing it we love you oh I yes also before b forgive me for interrupting uh shout out to don't quit your day job podcast the one that maxim hosts where he interviews uh comedians and other creatives on their uh creative pursuits and he's a and he's fantastic dude. fantastic too excellent podcast yes lucas and i have both been featured it's very good but maxim has a what would you do situation for both mm -hmm. of us uh, yesterday at the gym, I was in the free weights area and a dude came and started working out next to me. This is normal, but there was one issue. He brought in a Bluetooth speaker and was blasting his music. What would you do in this situation? One, ask him to shut it off. Two, complain to management. Or three, do nothing and pretend it's not happening like I did. How confrontational are you guys in public? Love you guys. Keep gazing across the savannah. Whatever that means, because I don't I fucking don't. know. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> what a wacko. Oh, that is really, really tough. <clears throat> um, I no, what were we gonna say? I was gonna say coming from the perspective of um having been in a gym once where I listened to a woman make like a call to her mother for 45 minutes that was like shouting and screaming and like I'm not gonna just give up on myself. Uh, I would do nothing. Because that's what I did then. <laughs> I rem that reminds me I remember I was in jury I was um not jury duty but I had answered the call to jury duty and I was just in a waiting room for a while before I was sure. just discharged but while I was just waiting around there was a woman in the waiting room with me who was talking about a case I think she was actually a lawyer in real in outside life but it happened to be called in for jury duty and I think she was talking about like just how negligent this father was to their to the his two kids and just Whoa. all of the details of this of this negligent parent's life and all the shit that these kids went through and i was like looking over at a woman i was like can you believe that we're just hearing all this she was like yeah and this is my first time ever being called in for jury duty as well and so and but yeah they're there, there are crazies in this world that just yeah say, that don't realize the effect they're having on other people. I think something about both of us being from New York is that like, you know, everyone thinks New Yorkers are like, I'm walking here. But I feel like the opposite is true. Where like, if I hear someone talking to themselves or playing their music too loud in public, I simply say nothing because it's their, yeah. maybe they're in a public space, but so is everyone crying and screaming and laughing too loud and like being too much in a public space. Who am I to say anything? Yeah. Um, I yeah. realistically, if I was in Maxim's place, I would have done exactly the same thing as Sam and just done nothing. Yeah. Just realistically. I, but if I, let's say I go back to the gym again and again and again, and this dude is there again and again and again, playing his music on a blue Well, then he's speaker. targeting you. <laughs> he's like right yeah. next to you. Then he's following me. Is like, I need to come up to Lucas. I'm going to play my music. <laughs> I'm going to play yeah. my music. And the music <sighs> is just like, Lucas, yeah. shut the fuck up over and over again over rap. <laughs> If that happened like repeatedly, I might talk to management. 
I might, I don't know. Mm. What would you do if it happened like really consistently? Um, I would stop going to that gym. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm that, I'm that level of like, no, I'm not going to confront this person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should be like me and get Ring Fit Adventure for your Nintendo Switch and use it sparingly. Spawn Con, Spawn Con! Join That's, us! It's very fun. Ring it's Fit Adventure. Fun. That is yeah. very fun. Um, should we do one more? Yes, one more, and then we'll... Uh, yeah. I think okay. we have one more new one, actually, so that's perfect. Perfect, let's do it. Oh, wait, wait do you have it up? Or um... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I can pull it up. I completely Wait, I just, forgot who was gonna do. Um, hold on. What? Um, I have it here. Hold on. It's uh, let me pull it because I just exited out of the tab by mistake. Oh, oh, oh wait. Oh. So, did we do this one? It says, "Okay, this is kind of stupid, but the people I idolize and oh, have never do. met in real life." We did that one. We did that one, but it's it's really funny. This person who was like, I think that celebrities oh, might yeah, not that, that, be real. They, they, they may not be real, yeah. <laughs> it but reminded we, we me, I one. don't know if we talked about the catfish episode where um a guy thinks he's in love with Katy Perry. Um I don't know if we talked about this. I don't this. know if I remember. I it reminded I remember me, that. and I feel like we didn't talk about this yet, but I watched a catfish episode where it's probably one of my favorite catfish episodes I've ever seen, where a mm-hmm. guy thinks that he's been talking to Katy Perry. Like right listener. and he even meets the person who's pretending to be Katy perry and it's not mm-hmm. Katy perry and he kind of gets his heart broken but then usually you know they check in on the catfish victims like six months later and they ask how they're doing um and usually they're like oh i'm good i'm getting over the heartbreak whatever but they checked in on this guy and this person still thinks he's been talking to Katy perry even though he met the real person who was messaging him oh my god and even max were like well how is that possible and he was like, I don't know. This whole thing just feels like something Katie would do. <laughs> <laughs> that you know, that feels like the best improv. Yes, and yeah. that feels that's what it feels like. Because I remember I was at an improv class one one time, and um, there's these two dudes doing a scene, and the premise is one guy says to the other, uh, "Dude, why do you keep?" stealing my clothes and shampoo and stuff why do you keep taking my things and he was like i mean you do the same thing with me and he was like no i don't i never do that and he said and the the save that this dude came up with he was like yeah but we're kind of playful like that oh (laughs) sure. it was just like this is the thing we i was just like that's what katie would do that's what katie Katie would do (laughs) (laughs) that is just the confidence Oh, I wish I had that. I know. Just to be like, yes, this is something Katie would do. She, uh, this, uh, I want to ask, do you watch like 90 Day Fiance? I've watched a couple episodes, but I haven't gotten fully into the so, franchise the way I have. So last Ash. year, so there's, um, so there's 90 Day Fiance, but then there's 90 Day before the 90 Days, which is where um, the Americans with their boyfriends or girlfriends in other countries go visit them in the other countries. Mm-hmm. And there's this dude who's like 60 years old. I forget his name. He's 60 years old. For seven years, he's been talking to a woman in the Ukraine on a dating website you have to pay to use each time you log on. Like to message this woman, you have to pay to use. He's gone to the Ukraine three times. Each time she's come up with a different excuse as to why they can't meet up. And he keeps going- But is she real? Let's, let's, hold, okay. Okay, okay. And so- and so, but he's confident that she still exists. And by the way, he has, he has a best friend who has a wife who's from the Ukraine who tells him, dude, this is a scam artist. I know I'm from the Ukraine. I know what women do there, what people do there in general. This is a scam. This is what they do. They're trying to hook, they try to hook line to sinker at dumb Americans into like paying exorbitant amounts of money on these dating sites. And he's like, no, 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 she's real. I love her. She loves me. And she, and she just, she, she had, she got sick one time and her, and her nephew had a hockey game. This is just what happens. It's like, and he's so confident. My nephew had a hockey real. game and you couldn't come <laughs> because yeah. Americans are banned from watching Russian hockey. <laughs> yeah. And what's crazy is that he goes to the Ukraine a fourth time and then a fifth time, I think. And then on the fifth time, she shows up. So she's real. She is real. But anytime they ask her sort of in-depth questions about her background or, or reasons why she said why she wasn't available, she would just shut down. 
she just wouldn't talk and then like she would see him very sparingly and like he proposes and she is like okay and i and she's she still keeps him at a distance even when she's in person she's still at a distance and it's i'm not kidding when i say that i thought when it was revealed that she was real and you see her walking towards the dude and they i genuinely thought about it was the best twist in all of tv that yeah. i've ever seen the fact that she was real it blew my mind <laughs> yeah. you're like sure she's not re- it's it's impossible yeah. that she's real <laughs> it's impossible and then she is i was like this is a better t- I'm, I'm not kidding when i say it might rival the reveal of darth vader as luke skywalker's father in terms of just like real twists that just change everything you thought well i think the best twist point. would have been that um luke skywalker who had been messaging was a with Ukrainian darth vader yeah <laughs> and then he wasn't a jedi at all he was just some guy <laughs> yeah and then Darth Vader would be like, well, that's exactly what a Jedi would do. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, but here's one more. So someone yes. said, I had no idea what I should share because I could have gone in several directions. We'll keep sharing them. But go in several directions, darling. Go in all the directions, zigzag for us. But I decided to share my weird phobia, which is eyes. And I don't mean Ooh. eyes themselves. I hate when people touch their eyes, flip their eyelids, or have an irritation in their eye. At 13, I was told I should wear contacts because I'd been wearing glasses since I was three. And the sheer thought of having to touch my eye every day uh, scarred me for so long that I still just wear glasses full time at 19. I literally cry every time I have to watch a friend take out contacts. I have no idea if this is weird or normal, but it's been an interesting part of my life for a long time. Why do you have to watch a friend take out contacts? Yeah, I don't know. I don't you can turn away for that. You can wait until your your buddy is done and then reconvene. It sounds like this person has the kind of fucked up friends that's like, watch me take out my contacts. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. Witness me. Yeah, like, but also like, I feel like this, this, I don't feel like this is that weird. This feels like a very normal or at least a very understandable reaction to something dis- un- unpleasurable in your life. This mm. is like, this is how you react and it doesn't feel that out of the ordinary. Like the, like you, you hate dealing with your own eyeballs. You don't want to see other people deal with theirs. Like that makes complete sense to me. Well, what do you think is weirder that or like my belly button thing, for example? Oh, your belly button thing is way weirder. What? I thought oh, everyone yeah. I thought everyone had that. It's so surprising to me that no. everyone can just touch their My belly, belly button. button is I could touch it all this and it doesn't You can feel touch like it anything. all day. Well, don't. I'm touching it right now. <laughs> no. I am fine. <laughs> I'm not. But but yeah, no, my my belly button is not that sensitive, which is weird because my body in general I think is very sensitive, but for some reason not my belly button especially at least. Well, I do think I understand the eye thing. I sometimes get a little grossed out seeing like, you know, my sister had glasses for a long time and seeing her like mm-hmm. take out her contacts and stuff was like kind of gross or like, like Sylvie wears contacts and she always has the good sense to go to the bathroom to take them out because, but like. Do it behind closed door, <laughs> behind closed doors like the dirty dog she is. I don't like your lifestyle, madam. <laughs> I don't want to see all of that. <laughs> Go down to the river. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I simply um, I I simply understand this phobia. I don't think it's yeah. anything wrong at all. It's very yeah. It feels very understandable in my yeah, mind. Yeah, for sure. And I would say you're not a bad person for not wanting to watch your your friends take out their contact lenses. I I think yeah. Don't if you know yourself, don't watch it. Yeah, just don't do it. You can stay or away from it. Or take off your or solution take off your glasses while they're doing that and you can't see them in focus Ooh, that wait that's the best point you made all day life hack life hack take off your glasses ignorance is bliss you yes. won't see a thing and it's gonna be fine yeah um, and so that's our advice to all our listeners just take off your glasses don't look at anything you're done looking for the day Bury your head in the sand. Close your eyes. Yes. <laughs> and that's how everything will be okay. The party is good. Winston Smith is an unperson. <laughs> it's all going to be fine. Yeah. Um, Lucas, do you know yes. what we've just accomplished, by the way, in this podcast? What did we just accomplish? 
We've been recording for a long time. And first of all, the episode was a reasonable length. And second of all, I've been peed once. <gasps> I did. I'm so proud of you. And I've been taking shots. <laughs> so Amazing. If you don't think I need to, you're going to be a lot very pee- soon, though. You're going to be peeing a lot very soon. I, I'm excited. Listeners, I hope you if, enjoy you want, yourself. if you want an image to take into the night, just imagine. And subscribe to our OnlyFans. <laughs> subscribe to our OnlyPans. OnlyPans! <laughs> <laughs> subscribe to our OnlyPans. I bang pots and pans together. <laughs> well, good night, everybody. And enjoy On that note, we say good night. Thank you very much, and we will we'll see you next time. <laughs>